So we are simply going to continue from where we stopped in part 8. In this part, this should be part 9, we will continue from where we stopped in this series of questions we have been doing for you on what to expect in your physics. As a jam candidate, you already know how crucial, how important. I mean, uh, you cannot neglect physics at all. Therefore, I am, I've been reviewing it for you, giving you possible questions, what you should expect, and all the rest. And we started from part one, we did part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, and we are now in part, this should be part nine. So I want you to pay close attention. Forbid any form of distraction. Anybody distracting you, any noise, any activity distracting you now is your enemy. I need your rapt, undivided attention. Okay, let's move on. In the last part, we stopped at question 28 and we'll continue from 28. The most suitable instrument to view the sun is dash. The most suitable instrument to view the sun is dash. And we say that it is helioscope. Helioscope. Helioscope is the most suitable instrument for viewing the sun. The most suitable instrument for viewing the sun is helioscope. Helioscope. Okay, I, I highlighted it in the other part. So let's continue with question number 29. The eclipse of the moon occurs when dash. The eclipse of the moon, pay attention, oh, this is very crucial. The eclipse of the moon occurs when dash A, eh? the moon reflects the rays from the sun to the earth. B, the moon comes exactly between the earth and the sun. C, the earth comes exactly between the moon and the sun. D. The sun comes exactly between the earth and the moon. Okay, the answer is lunar eclipse occurs when the earth is positioned between the moon and the sun and the earth shadow is cast on the surface of the moon. Lunar eclipse occurs when earth is positioned between the moon and the sun and the shadow from the earth is cast upon the moon. I hope you followed. Okay. Let's look at this energy. This question 31. By the way, for those of you that are serious, for those of you that will watch this video from now to the end, I'm going to give you a gift. And that gift will be free jam syllables and free jam pass question. If you watch this very video from now to the very end, you will qualify to get free jam syllables and free jam pass question. That is if you watch this video to the end. That is why I'm giving you those materials so that you prepare yourself. I need you to be extremely prepared to enter into the exam hall. So that as they throw the question from one subject to the other, no matter the dimension of the question, you will be very, very prepared. Because in jam, you cannot copy from your neighbor and nobody will help you. It is you and your system, your computer. The amount of energy required to change a kilogram of ice block into the water without a change in temperature is that. The amount of energy required, first of all, let's try to understand the question. The amount of energy required to change a kilogram of ice block into the water Without a change in temperature, is that A, specific latent heat of fusion of ice, B, specific heat capacity of ice, C, heat capacity of ice, D, specific heat of vaporization of ice. The answer is specific, specific latent heat of fusion of ice, specific latent heat of fusion of ice. Specific latent heat of fusion of a substance is the quantity, I need you to note this, specific latent heat of fusion of a substance is the quantity of heat required to convert the mass, the unit mass of the substance from the solid to the liquid state without a change in temperature. Let me read it again. Specific latent heat of fusion of a substance is the quantity of heat required to convert the unit mass of the substance from the solid to the liquid state without a change in temperature. 
I have an assignment for you. Assignment number one. Tell me the difference between fusion and fission. Fusion, F-U-S-I-O-N. Then fission, F-I-S-I-O-N. Don't jump this assignment. I've already seen something. And that's why I am choosing that particular assignment. Okay? Look, let's look at this question. Let's look at this question. But before we look at it, there is something I need you to understand about jump exam. Why you need to prepare very well. And that is because you have only 40 seconds to attempt each of the questions you will be given. They will give you, jam will jam you with 180 questions. 180. And you don't have, you don't have five, five minutes per question, no. You don't have two, two minutes to answer each question, no. Whether calculation, whether theoretical, no. You don't have one, one minute to answer even one question, no. What you have is 40, 40 seconds per question. 40, 40 seconds per question. Are you following? That's why you need extra seriousness. Okay, let's look at this question. Which expression gives the magnetic flaws? What is the formula for magnetic flaws? A, you can see option A, you can see option B, you can see option C and option D. The answer, the answer is option C. Magnetic flaws is B A cos theta. B A cos theta. Magnetic flaws is the measurement of total magnetic field which passes through a given area. Measurement of the total magnetic field that passes through a given area is called magnetic flux. Mathematically, it is the surface A integral of the normal component of the magnetic field passing through that surface. Magnetic field is often denoted as B. Okay, let's look at this question. Question number 33. Recall that, as I always say, these videos I make are important. They are crucial. They are revealing what you should expect, even though they may not be the exact thing, but they will point you to what it could be. But then I need you to also be extremely careful. Careful in the sense that don't just watch these videos and fold your arms. The first step, watch these videos over and over again. I have done quite a lot of videos on physics, chemistry, biology, this of English, economics, and all the rest. So watch them many, many times so that you get yourself acquainted with the topics. But then beyond watching the videos, I need you to dig deeper, go deeper. Get your past question, which I will give you. Get your syllabus, which I will give you free of charge if you watch this video till the end. Get this material, sit down and study. Sit down and do what? Study. Okay. The graph of pressure against the graph of pressure against the reciprocal of the volume. That is P or, uh, equals to IV. In both law is a dash. The graph of pressure against the reciprocal of volume. That is IV, 1 over V. In both law is a dash A. Hyperbola B. Parabola C. Curve D. Straight line. The graph of pressure again the reciprocal of is is a line passing through the origin. So it is D. Straight line. It is straight line. An assignment for you. Homework number two. Define state boy's law for me. State Charles law for me. States, just two of them, Boyce Law and Charles Law. There is a reason for this assignment. I expect you to submit the assignment. State, Charles Law and Boyce Law. Charles Law and Boyce Law. Set it for me in the comment section. Okay? Look at this question very well. Are you still with me? The main factor. The main factor which affects the speed of sound wave is the dash. In your textbook, you will see everything about waves. So get your textbook and read up as much as you can on waves. Waves, waves. Very, very important. The main factor which affects the speed of sound wave is the dash. The main factor which affects the speed of sound wave, sound wave, 
The factor affecting the speed of sound wave is a dash. A. Properties of the medium. B. Amplitude of the sound wave. C. Intensity of the sound wave. D. Loudness of the sound wave. The main factor which affect the speed of sound wave is the dash. Properties of the medium. Amplitude of the sound wave. Intensity of the sound wave. Sound loudness of the sound wave. The answer is A. The main factor that affects the speed of sound wave is the properties of the medium. The medium is traveling to whether air, solid, liquid, and all the rest. The medium. Factors affecting the speed of sound wave include nature of material or medium, the density of the medium, the temperature of the medium. Do you understand? These are very, very crucial areas. Okay, let me explain further. Nature of my sound sound travels further, faster in liquid than in gases and faster in solid than in liquids the density of the medium sound requires a medium to travel the density of the medium is among the factors which affect the speed of sound temperature of the medium high the higher the temperature the higher the speed of sound in the medium are you with me if you are following let me know if the videos i make are helpful to you please let me know in the comment section if the videos i make are helpful to you let me know in the comment section also very importantly another thing is if you want me to give you access to all the videos i've done on physics i can give them to you just ask me say sir please give me all the videos you have done on physics if you also need all the videos i've done on chemistry biology Lucky Headmaster, just mention the subject and tell me to give you the link in, in that subject. I could give them to you free, free, free of charge. If the videos I'm making are helping you, of course, remember to tell me that you are benefiting from them. Let's look at semiconductor. A semiconductor is formed by A, coordinate bonds, B, electrovariant bonds, C, a substance free of bonds, D, covalent bond. A semiconductor is formed by covalent bond. Semiconductors are generally formed from silicon, germanium, and other pure elements by adding impurities to the element. And because it is the bonding between uh, uh, these substances, these elements and impurities, it is covalent bonding. Assignment number three. Tell me the difference between electrovalent bonds and covalent bonds. Define them and tell me the difference. Remember, these assignments I give you are so important. You cannot, you cannot run away from it, whether you solve it now or whether you jam it in the exam hall. So go over, seek the answers to this assignment and come and tell me in the comment section. There is a, any single assignment I give, there is something I see that is pushing me to give the assignment. Let's look at this question. Which of the following is a scalar quantity? Which of the following is a scalar? Remember, in part seven, we have done about scalar quantities and, the, and the vector quantities, okay? Which of the following is a scalar quantity? A, weight. B, momentum. C, potential energy. D, displacement. Which of the following is a scalar quantity? Weight, momentum, potential energy, and displacement. The answer is C. Potential energy is a scalar quantity. Now, let me explain. Vector quantities have magnitude and direction. You know, SS1 work in physics. They will teach you scalars. They will teach you vectors. They will teach you fundamental units and derived units. Right? Vector quantities have magnitude and direction. Scalar quantities have only magnitude. Examples of vector quantities are weight, displacement, acceleration, force, momentum. Then those that has only scalar quantities has only magnitude. Examples of them are distance, distance, mass, speed, time, energy, volume. Let me teach you again, though. Very important. Remember, 
here you are not just watching past questions just watch you are watching something that will determine your future by the way I want you to claim the sins. You will gain admission this year. There is no two ways about it. I want you to claim it. You will score 300 and above in this jam. Many people may not score high. Many people may score 130, 170, 180, 200, but it's not for you. You will score 300 and above. That is my prayer for you, and that is what we are working towards. If you claim it, type I claim it in the comment section. These are the areas we are going. You will gain admission this year. Not any kind of university. You will gain admission into that university that you want, your preferred university. And they will not give you any kind of course. They will give you your course, the course you dream of. If you claim it, type I claim it in the comment section. And if you claim it, we work harder. Examples of vector quantities. Vector quantities have magnitude and direction. Examples, weight, displacement, acceleration, force, and momentum. Scalar quantity has only only only, only uh, magnitude. There are distance, mass, speed, energy, time, and volume. Now, in the next video, we will continue from where we start. In the next video, we will continue from where we start. For you to get the free jam syllabus and free jam pass question that I say do four things number one is compulsory number one join our youtube channel that is compulsory when you join stop dodging it some of you are dodging stop dodging joining click on join follow the prompts join it's an investment you need it you need to get access to me you need to be able to talk to me directly ask me your questions that is what you can do when you join just click on join and join number two like this video click on like like this video number three when you like this video share this video very crucial share this video click on share copy the link share the video on youtube this video on youtube copy the link also share it on whatsapp groups on whatsapp status share it on facebook share it on twitter share it on telegram channel share it to your classmates your teammates everybody close to your writing physics in jam just share it across board to everybody then finally subscribe to our youtube channel noble tutorials subscribe to our youtube channel noble tutorials once you subscribe come under the comment of this video and type i have subscribed type what i have subscribed once i see you type i've subscribed i will chat you up and send you all the materials you need but you must have answered the assignments i gave you watch this video again answer the assignment i gave you there is a video very important video i'm leaving for you on the screen click on it now and watch